Everybody listen close here. Pull the Bethesda. I forgot how to speak loud now. Okay. Uh, the large structure you see in the middle is a Byzantine church. <coughs> so in Jesus' time, the New Testament talks about porticos around the pools. And as we go lower, this is uh, the rules for archaeological dig work here. The lower we go, the further back we go. But what we want to talk about in New Testament times is pools up here with imagined porticos and columns around. And uh, one thing I want to add, I don't want to go into too much where you're going. Go ahead, go ahead. But is that this was not found until uh, 20th century, late 19th century. So many theologians thought that this whole, the whole uh, chapter, John 5, was an allegory. Because they didn't find these pools and thought, oh, maybe it's just an allegory. So this is a reminder to us where to put our trust. Not in things that we haven't found, but in, in what we do found. And uh, yeah, the, the, if I go any further, I'm... I'm afraid I'll be right. touching on. Just like with Christ, they said, "Check for yourself. See that no prophet is born in Galilee." Is born in Galilee. Well, if they knew what we knew, he wasn't born in Galilee. He was born in Bethlehem, where he's supposed to be born, but they just didn't know it. Now, this uh, this is where one of the uh, great fissures, whenever people wanted dead Jesus, occurred with what occurred right here. Uh, he is. Uh, John chapter 3, he's talking to a man with a spiritual problem, uh, Nicodemus. John 4, he's got a woman with a moral problem. Uh, in John uh, 5, he's got a man with a physical problem. So he, he's always meeting all the needs. And it says this in the uh, New International Version. Great from everyone. Yeah, they weren't. They stopped all the Bibles and they took this and went, that's all right. <laughs> and there is in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate a pool, which in the Aramaic is called Bethesda. Beth Hasidic. Uh, Hasidic, meaning uh, faithful or mercy. And so this is the house of mercy. If you started a, uh, a hospital, a good name for it would be Bethesda. Okay, and so this is the house of mercy, and it's uh, surrounded by five covered uh, porches called the porches of Solomon. And you know, here, a great number of disabled people used to lie the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. Some have felt that this is a picture here that you have, just like you have five, uh, five. Uh, points of law, Genesis through Deuteronomy, you have five stone porches. And in there you have, by the sheep gate, you have the sheep. And they are those that are, because of man's violation of the law, they are there in the house of mercy. And they are <laughs> blind, lame, and they can't walk. Can y'all remember your pagan days that well? When you were blind, you could look at the Bible all day and you couldn't figure it out. They could talk to you all day about God and you could not figure it out. A veil lies over your heart by the prince of the power of the air. That we were lame. That we, uh, Mark, no, who was it? Mark Twain said, quitting smoking, it's no problem. I've done it dozens of times. <laughs> <laughs> that we make all of our w ways that we're going to fix things and we're going to repair things, but we're lame. We don't have the ability to do it. And they are uh, paralyzed. Some of us cannot move at all to help us. And so it's kind of a progression. You're blind to God, you cannot walk, and you are helpless. And that is where you were. Amen? Amen. That is where you and I were. Lying there at the pool of mercy, unable to move on the law of God. And there is a man who had been an invalid for 38 years. How long does Israel wander in sin? 40. And uh, there's one occasion in the book of Deuteronomy that says they wandered for 38 years, and it tags on two more years. I think this is a picture of Israel. This is the way they looked under judgment. And Jesus saw a man lying there and learned he had been a long time in that condition and said, Do you wish to get well? Now, that sounds like a stupid question. <laughs> you know? 
you've been there for 40 years, would you like to get well? But really, are there a lot of people that we know that are blind, lame, and paralyzed, that are lying there and can't do anything, and we come to talk to them about being made whole in Christ, declared righteous, forgiven, the life of God given to them, their names written in the book of life, and we say, would you like to be saved? Mm -hmm. And they say, get out of here, take your Bible, take your Jesus, and leave me alone. They are insulted. And so Christ asked the question, would you like to be healed? And the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. When I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down. Now, this Bible wonderfully doesn't record the text. It probably shouldn't be there. Mm. And that's good. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. The New American Standard puts in parentheses something that there was a superstition about this pool. A little bit later, it's going to say this. Um, let's see. Um, don't worry about it. Anybody know what the superstition was about this pool when the water began to bubble up? Yeah, that an angel had stirred it. In other words, that the only way that you could get healed was heaven and earth had to meet and the water had to get stirred up. But then it's up to you. The first guy in gets healed and everybody else doesn't. So everybody's <laughs> watching the pool. And I never once in a while somebody will throw a rock just for fun. And so it's a competition. And so the guy that gets healed is the guy that works the hardest. Would you like to be healed? And the guy says, I have no one to help me into the pool. And when the water stirred, someone I'm trying to get in, somebody else goes in ahead of me. That was, God love them, Israel of their day. That the way you got to heaven, how was it, John? How did you think he was getting to heaven? Follow the law. He's got to follow it. It's up to me. It's a competition. Uh, heaven better not be any better than me because I'm in trouble. And so in light of the law of God and the place of mercy, what's the purpose of law? To bring you to the mercy of God. And here they were, the sheep of God wandered in sin for 40 years. This is the perfect picture hmm. of salvation. And But they got something wrong, and that was the means to be saved. They think it is by works, not by faith. How many of you all here were not Christians because you were working for it yourself? Anybody? Just how many of you were complete perverts? <laughs> 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 Well, that was us. Uh, I have no man, but when I'm coming, someone jumps down. I can't do it, and I can't get anybody else to help me to get me down there. Carl Hodges, is that a profound, sad place to be in life? Yes. And so that was Israel, laying on the law before the place of mercy, wandering for 38, 40 years in sickness. You want to get well? Yes. And here's what I think salvation is. Superstition had gotten in there. And that's why Christ and John the Baptist hit that wall because they were the ultimate reformers when they were born. They came in the light of all this darkness bringing the grace of God. That's why some of the greatest texts you can read is the text by uh, Zacharias and by Mary by what they said whenever the word was brought to them, that John the Baptist that was going to be followed by Christ. And they give the most profound exclamations that can be found out anywhere outside of the prophets because they had, the, the truth had now come. And so Jesus said, get up, pick up your mat, and walk. What you have to do is trust me. And based upon my word, you will get up, and what held you down, you will pick it up, and you will walk. You won't kind of be healed. You will be walking and leaping and praising God. If you've been lame for 38 years, anybody here in healthcare? Donna, what does atrophy look like? If you're laying there for 38 years, you have atrophied. 
And so for Jesus to say, do this, is almost a practical joke. But as the man seeks to obey, all of a sudden, like the lame man in the temple, he's walking and leaping and praising God. He's healed. Well, you say, this is great. Uh, the day on which this took place was the Sabbath. So the Jews said to the man who had been healed, it's a Sabbath. The Lord forbids you to carry your, it's illegal for you to be healed. Okay. You didn't do it the way that we think. How many of you, when you got saved, went back and they said, why has your life changed? Why are you walking, leaping, praising God? And you said, because Jesus said to me, I was healed. And whenever you said that, how many of you caught flack for saying that? What, what, who jumped on you? Was it a Catholic, a wandering oh, Lutheran? Oh, my hot buddies. They just, they just downed me and said, why aren't you telling dirty jokes? Why aren't you drinking? Why aren't you cussing? Why aren't you doing Let's stop right there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they just said, how can that be? Did anybody come out of a, uh, old, a Church of Christ, Catholic, some kind of works background? Yeah. What happened to you uh, whenever you said that you were saved, newcomer? Catholics would just shake their head and scold you. And How can you <laughs> say that you are saved? You're not there yet. So, yeah. So they said the same thing to this guy. How can you say that? Uh, he replied, the man who made me well said, pick up your mat and walk. Who is this fellow? The man who was healed had no idea who it was. Jesus slipped away into the crowd. Later, Jesus found him. And tell me this isn't a great second sermon. Jesus found him in the temple. He said, come here. See that you, see you are well again. Stop sinning. Obviously that doesn't mean be perfect. That means quit doing, Carl, all that stuff you used to do. <laughs> he says, see that you are well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. Huh. What is worse than physical paralysis? Spiritual paralysis. Where because of your 